In this lesson, we will learn how to easily predict the product of an ozonolysis reaction. There are basically two ozonolysis reactions that can happen. The first one is ozonolysis that happens under reductive conditions. So the reagents for that is first step O3 ozone and then second step could be multiple reagents. It could be zinc H2O, CH32S or H2PD. Here I wrote out how to figure out the product. Basically you will break the double bond in half and you will add two oxygens, one on each carbon from the double bond. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example and try to figure out what the products would be. Uh, I forgot to say ozonolysis reactions happens on an alkene. So you must have a C double bond C for this reaction to occur. So here we see an alkene, we see a double bond and we see our first step is O3 and our second step is uh, ZnH2O. So the way we will predict the product is we will basically break this double bond in half. So let's go ahead and break it in half and I'm going to draw it a little ugly but th those would be the two halves. And then we add two oxygens, one on each carbon from the double bond. So I'm going to add an oxygen here and an oxygen here. And that's it. Now, if you want to draw it um, more beautifully, you can number your carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six carbons. And you can number here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And my carbon number one has a double bond O. Oh and my carbon number five has a double bond O as well. And that is the product of ozonolysis on this starting material. Now, um, I'm going to give you another example. Let's say you have a double bond like this and same thing here. Let's say we have O3. Um, let's switch it up and do CH32S as our uh, second reagent. All you need to do is you break the double bond in half. So you get this and this, and then you add an oxygen to each part. And basically this one will result in two uh, products, the, the left one and the right one. Since here we broke a ring, it just gives us one product with two double bond O's. Now let's go ahead and look at ozonolysis under a second set of conditions, which is called oxidative conditions. So here the second reagent would be H2O2, HCOH. And basically here almost the same thing happens. We still break the double bond in half and we still add two oxygens, one on each carbon from the double bond. But there is something extra that you have to be aware of. If you get an aldehyde at the end, and an aldehyde basically means C double bond O at the end of the chain. You will have to make it into a carboxylic acid. So for example, here I have an aldehyde. I will, instead of hydrogen, I will have to replace it with OH to make it into carboxylic acid. And that's all you have to do. So it's also pretty simple, a little bit more complicated than the um, than the a reductive ozonolysis. So let's go ahead and practice. Again, we break our double bond in half and we will draw the two halves here and then here. And again, we add oxygen to each one, just like before. But now let's take a look at our double bond O's. This double bond O's is, O is between two carbons. So this is a ketone. It doesn't have any hydrogen, so if we leave it alone, it's a ketone, it's good to go. Now, if we take a look at this double bond O, it has, it's only attached to one carbon. So what else is it attached to? Because this carbon must have four bonds. Um, it must be attached to a hydrogen, which it means that this is an aldehyde. Notice this double bond O is at the end of the chain. It's only connected to one carbon, it's an aldehyde. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to raise this hydrogen and I'm going to replace it with an OH, making a carboxylic acid. Again, my molecule is not looking its best, so I'm going to rewrite it. It's correct though, so that's all that matters. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
but I'm going to make it more beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, and six. My carbon number two has a double one O. And my carbon number six has a double one O and an OH. I hope you found this lesson helpful and I look forward to seeing you in more of my organic chemistry and general chemistry videos.